Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Probability and Statistics Playlist. Um, today, I will be going over z-scores and the standard normal distribution. So you may have heard of the normal distribution before, and that's where I will be starting today. Um, it is this bell-shaped curve. I kind of drew one up there. Um, it is symmetric and peaks at mu, the average. And the total area under the curve must equal 1. So I'll start by writing, just like any PDF, the area under normal curve must equal 1. Then I will follow that up by writing out the um, f of x is equal to um, what gives the normal distribution curve. And so this um, f of x gives the normal distribution curve. It's in, in important to see that this depends on the value of mu, and it depends on the value of sigma, uh, so the standard is, um, deviation. Uh, so um, if you were with us a few videos back, you would remember that standard deviation, well, that's a measurement of variation from the mean. So I will draw a few pictures here. But if you have a small standard de um, deviation, then your normal distribution curve is going to be really um, If you have a big standard deviation, you're going to have a very broad spread of values because they vary from the mean a lot. OK, so um, the next important thing I'm going to talk about is z-scores, and that's kind of something that's often coupled with the normal distribution. In the next video, I'll be going over examples of how to use z-scores in order to um, apply it to the real world. It's very helpful. But for now, I'll just be going over what things are and how to. Um. So a z-score is a measure of the number of standard deviations a value x strays from the mean mu. Um, and coupled with um, a normal distribution, you can kind of see um, what is the probability of finding um, a z value under a certain other value. And that's often called z1. So I'm going to start um, putting these together in terms of um, what's often asked. And so pz less than z1. It basically means that what is the probability of finding in this curve some z1? The area under this will give the probability of finding some z less than z1. OK, so next I'm going to talk about probability of finding z greater than z1. And if you recall, um, the area under the normal distribution curve is 1. So by, by um, subtracting um, this area that we've already found by 1, we can easily find pz greater than z1. So this is 1 minus pz less than z1. And for the third, um, third kind of question that's often asked is the probability of finding z between two z values, z1 and z2. And uh, for a similar reason, if you can kind of visualize it, um, if you want to find the value between these two, and you're able to use um, some kind of z table or calculator to find z1 from here to negative infinity and z2 here to negative infinity, then if you subtract those two, then you should be able to get um, the area between them. So that means that probability of finding z between these two values is equal to probability of finding z z2. Probability of z less than z1. Those are very, very important and very helpful properties to use when uh, dealing with the normal distribution and z-scores. And we will be going over some examples of central limit theorem and how to use this in actual daily um, applications. Uh, for example, uh, test scores tend to be normally distributed or something similar to that. Uh, uh, the mu is around a b and standard deviation can vary. But yeah, we'll be going over how to use this. So hopefully you'll stick with us. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more, you can click right up there for the probability and statistics playlist. If you want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, you can feel free to click right there. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, feel free to click here. If you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the top corner up there. Feel free to click that for the same links. Thank you very much for watching.